right, welcome back, everyone. So, um, as I alluded to in the last segment, I'm going to talk about, um, until you talk about stress shock phenomena, last segment, segment I talked about the general adaption system, syndrome as it concerns responding to stress. So, in the continuation of that, I'm going to kind of uh, amplify that discussion with uh, some examples of how um, you know stress shock phenomena can be used to actually overcome uh, a threat to you. And so, what is stress shock phenomena? For lack of a better term, it's that deer in the headlight looks. It's when you're totally shocked and you're like, like whoa, trying to figure out what's going on. And it's that moment where you don't do anything. We're just kind of standing there. <clears throat> and um, it's also in Cooper's Color Codes of readiness, I addressed it as condition black, right? So it's that moment where you're just kind of like, you know, stunned, like, whoa, what ha what's happening? And unfortunately, while you're in that stunned mode, you're probably in that dead mode. Um, that's why sometimes deer stop in the headlights and uh, <clears throat> because they are kind of stunned by the light, they don't know what, the, what it is and they get run over and get killed for it. My OTC instructor, he used to always tell us, um, his words were, don't just stand there, do something, God damn it, even if it's wrong, do something. Those were his words I still remember, among other, other things that he used to say to us. Um, and he's right. So, <clears throat> um, stress shock phenomena, how does it work? Um, when you're, again, when you're surprised, I talked about the general adaption syndrome last time, it takes a moment to change gears and get into fight or flight mode. And it's in that moment that we want to take advantage of the adversary. If we understand that principle, then uh, it's much easier to, to apply the, the, the four, tenements, or four tenets or principles of co my combat, so to speak. Speed, surprise, violence of action, and momentum. So we used to do demonstrations all the time. Um, we call them like, they're basically capexes, capability exercises. And we did that for politicians and decision makers to show them our capability so that they had the confidence to uh, deploy the unit on whatever, you know, hostage rescue missions or whatever it was required. And uh, we used to do one particular scenario where we set up like a cafe scene. And, um, you know, we had mannequins all dressed up, you know, dinner tables. So it kind of looked like a little, um, like a cafe bar. And, uh, and we did have some live role players in there that were basically acting as hostages. And the targets were either silhouettes or they were mannequins. And if you can imagine, this room was had four walls, and one of the walls was um, essentially polycarbonate glass, bulletproof glass. And on the other side were bleachers where all the VIPs would sit so they could see into the room. Um, on one side of the room was a door, the entryway. And the assault team would line up on the outside of the door. Um, the Usually the unit psychologist and the commander would give a briefing to the uh, VIPs and tell them, okay, this is, you know, you're going to see an assault team enter the room and basically eliminate the threat and take out the, uh, the hostage. And so um, they put their eyes and ears on, they got ready. And then on the outside of the door, uh, I remember doing this, I would breach the door with explosives, right? So what did explosives get me? It gave me it gave me a surprise, right? Um, it would shock the hell out of everybody in the room when the door blows up. And that's okay because I want we wanted that effect. Why? Because we want the uh, the people in that room to go from cruising in fifth gear to have to downshift to third gear to either fight or to run or whatever they're going to do. And it's in that moment where they're in that transition that they are now vulnerable. Because we already have done what? We've already... Um, basically imp uh, uh, impose our will, if you will, as we go through the, as a room. We're already in violence of action mode, okay? We've already got the surprise, we got the speed because the surprise explosion opened the door and gave us the ability to get in quickly. Um, we're shooting as we're moving, so we're, we're, you know, we're using violence of action, and we're flowing into that room like water being poured into the room. Um, we, we're maintaining that momentum and overwhelming the room and everybody in it. Um, meanwhile, the adversary is still trying to figure out what is going on. He's going through the OODA loop, right? He's trying to observe, okay, explosion, guys are coming with guns. He's trying to orient, come up with courses of action. What am I going to do? He's trying to, you know, he's got to select a course of action, either run, hide under the table, get your gun out and fight. There's a lot of things he's got to process it in a microsecond. Um, and while he's going through that, that process and deliberately deciding what he's going to do, 
He's got to take the next step. He's got to act. And by the time he gets to that point in the decision-making cycle of the OODA loop, it's too late. He's already dead because we're actually in action mode and he's still in orientation decision mode <laughs> and it's way too late for him. So that gives us a tactical uh, strategic surprise, if you will, uh, to clear a room. And that's with anything that it could be a street fight. Um, it's the same thing. <clears throat> when a guy doesn't expect you to fight, um, even though you guys might be in an altercation, maybe he thinks that, uh, you know, he's bullying you. Maybe he thinks he has you intimidated because he's posturing, he's puffing up his chest, you know, he's talking loud. Um, he may actually think he has the, uh, the advantage right now and, uh, and he's emboldened by that. But what he's probably not going to expect is you're not going to say anything. You just start shooting, all right, with your fist. Um, maybe it's an uppercut, maybe it's a forearm strike, maybe it's a headbutt. But suddenly you have done what? You surprised him. You're using speed because you took the initiative. You're imposing your will. You're moving forward. You have that momentum. And guess what? He's now in your OODA loop. He's still trying to orient and decide, holy shit, this guy's all over me. What am I going to do? And his, actually his response is to everything that you're already doing to him, right? He's got to figure out how he's going to quickly defend or counter uh, your attack strategy, your attack mode. And uh, so he's severely disadvantaged. So the lesson learned there is if you're going to strike, strike first. Um, you know, take the initiative and, and win the fight. Don't try to be a counterfighter um, if you don't have the skills for that, which takes a lot of skill. Um, then you're going to be on the losing end of any altercation. So, um, <clears throat> so that's basically how it works. Uh, this whole stress shock phenomenon, because you go into this quick mode of changing gears for lack of a better uh, way to describe that. And while you're in that transition phase, pushing that clutch in and downshift in, um, the fight's over. Um, it's, it's just that fast. And so keep that in mind. That applies to anything. Um, I'll talk about the application of that in the business world, um, how you apply these principles in in a commercial corporate setting, which is pretty interesting. So we, we're going to take this military mindset for combat and we're going we're gonna to basically transfer it over here to the corporate civilian world uh, for capitalism and how to make money with it.